Did you know that in Tinkercad with only one shape, a box, and its properties window, including radius, steps, length, width, and height, that you can combine a bunch of those boxes and create unique designs, like this USB programmer case? It's real easy to do, and I'll show you how I did it on this week's Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. In a previous video, I showed you how you can use Tinkercad circuits to write some code, simulate the circuit, then take the code, use Arduino to program the microcontroller with a little USB programmer, and then build it into an actual circuit and make it run. But I didn't want to keep using a bare board like this, possibly shorting something out or grabbing or breaking a component, so I wanted to make a case, more like a little USB dongle. And I wanted to show you that Tinkercad is very capable. By only using one shape, a box, and its properties, you can group a bunch of boxes together and easily make a useful design, like this USB programmer case. And here's visually step-by-step -step how I made the case using just boxes adjusted by the properties window. It all starts with one box. You can set the radius of the corners to make it rounded, and then you can set the steps to make it smoother. Then you can set the length, width, and height to get the shape and the size you want. In this case, the size and shape that I wanted for the USB programmer. Now let me take you through all the steps. Not only did I have my case, but I also want to make a design for the programmer itself. So there's a box for the circuit board, there's a rounded box for the socket where the chip goes, and there's a rounded box for the USB connector. So then I took the case and then I made a smaller version that was hollow or a hole and group those together so now you see it's a hollow box so the board can slide inside. Then I modified the circuit board and added another little rounded box for a cutout so I could grab the chip and then group those two together and you can see the case is pretty much formed. So it didn't take that many boxes to make this but I wanted to side flat so it would easily print standing up so I used another box to cut that off. And then I simply duplicated the case and then used two hole boxes in line to cut this into two pieces, a long half and a short half. And to prevent the circuit board from being loose inside the case, I made these two little boxes plus one flat one. Those little boxes are slightly taller than the ledge that the circuit board rides on. So when the board goes in, it's an interference fit and it holds the circuit board. But then that would bulge out the bottom, so I put this flat lip on it, which goes against the other side of the case, and that stops any bulging and lines everything up. So now I was ready to take this case to the slicer, print it out, and see if it fits. For this project, I'm going to use my Prusa Core 1, and I'm going to use some Prusa Orange PETG, which to me is better for electronics than PLA. I brought the Tinkercad design into Prusa Slicer. I'm going to slice it at a 0.2 layer height using the Prusa PTG settings and the Core 1 selection. 15% infill. It said 30 minutes to print this. Now, I also did two other things. I positioned it so I could get the seam to go on the side. And so that way it'll be less noticeable. And also, I didn't like the little bit of contact area on the bed, so I put a brim on it just to help these stay in place. And here's the result. The print came out successful. So now let's pop it off and see if it fits the board. So I'll start with the shorter piece that has the interference fit. So this board should rub on it and I can feel it. And it kind of like snaps right over it and fits solid. And now I'll put the other half on it that slides over the USB connector and should go over that lip on the bottom. And as I slide it, I can feel it snap in place. So the design is doing just what I wanted it to do. And this looks far more attractive than a bare board, and I'm not afraid to touch it or break anything. It turned out great. But can I get the chip in place? So with my fat fingers, I can easily put it in, and then from the sides, grab it and pull it back out. So everything is working just as I hoped. And from there, I can plug the chip into a little circuit board. And speaking of circuit boards, if you need one, check out PCBWay.com. They offer 10 pieces for 5 bucks plus shipping. Just click on that. Upload your Gerber files, select everything you want, and it shows right here. Ten pieces will cost you five bucks for 24-hour turnaround plus shipping, in my case, $27.78. And if you have a circuit board and you need it assembled, well, let's go back to PCBWay.com. They offer $29 assembly services with free shipping. 
free shipping, and you can go turnkey, kitted, or a combo of the two to give them the components. So there it is, ten or twenty pieces, twenty nine dollars, twenty nine bucks free shipping. Can't beat that. And if you don't have a three D printer or you want a really quality three D print, well, they offer other services like CNC machining, three D printing, sheet metal fabrication, or injection molding. So if you want to go professional with your electronics design, check out PCBWay.com. It really is surprising what you can do in Tinkercad with just a box and its properties window. Now, it can be tempting to drag the box and do different sizes, but if you stick with that properties window, you can make pretty much anything you want and go back at any point in the time and adjust. And grouping them together and rounding the corners and using it as a whole, you can really make some interesting things. I never would have suspected that this USB case that I created could have been done with a box until I did it. So what can you do with a box in Tinkercad? I'd love to know your ideas. Let me know in the comments below. I want to give a special shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Without your support, I couldn't keep this channel going. So thank you. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at things.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.